intention is a concept that comes up again and again when we are talking about playing a musical instrument in a way that is efficient and easy on our bodies. And it usually is brought up in the context of get rid of tension. We don't want tension. Tension causes problems. And this is certainly well-meaning and it's true that tension in a wrong place or too much tension in a place where it's needed can, can cause a lot of problems for our playing. Uh, tension is a fact of life. Uh, you wouldn't be able to move your arms or stand up or walk or do anything without muscle tension. Um, so it's all about finding balance and this is often trickiest for wind instrumentalists when it comes to breathing because we need to change from blowing out, which requires a lot of force, to breathing in, which requires some force, but in a totally different set of muscles. We need to change on a dime. Um, so what I want to go through today is some exercises away from the instrument that support efficient, natural use of our muscles and our bodies for breathing. And I'm not going to use any of the traditional terms that you might hear when talking about breathing. I'm not going to say the word diaphragm. I'm not going to talk about your intercostal muscles. I'm not going to name any specific muscle groups. I'm just going to talk in general terms today because I have always found that uh, with students, it's easiest to go for finding the experience first and then you can add on some uh, knowledge of anatomy later as it becomes uh, a little bit more ingrained naturally. So we're going to start out with some exercises away from the instrument and then I'll show you how I would go about adding uh, these patterns of breathing to playing my clarinet. So for all of these exercises that we're going to do today and for really 100% of the time that you're playing a wind instrument, you want the airway in your throat to remain open. So just, I'm going to connect really quickly with what it feels like to close that airway. And most people do this when they hold their breath. So I'm going to take a breath in and hold and pay attention to what happens here. So what you'll probably experience when you do this is that you'll notice an expansion in your chest cavity and your abdomen when you take a breath in. And then when you go to holding, all of these cavities will collapse in just a little bit, but your breath won't go anywhere and it's because you're closing at your throat. So one more time, let's just experience that. So there are going to be some times in these exercises when we don't want to try to move any breath in or out. And instead of holding as we just did, we're going to do what I call suspending your breath, which means keeping tense the muscles that are responsible for drawing air in or pushing air out and keeping our throat open so that no air is able to come in or out. So for this first exercise, I want you to experience an exhalation that happens with no effort whatsoever, or at least an exhalation that starts without you having to physically do anything to initiate force. To begin, I'd like you to put your hands around your lower abdomen with your thumbs at about your lowest ribs that you can feel in the front and your fingers on your stomach. So when we draw in, I want you to feel for an expansion in this space. And when it gets to about your thumbs or maybe a little bit past where your thumbs are in your ribs, I want you to suspend your breath. So again, that means that you're going to keep your throat open, but not allow any air to escape. So for inhalation, you can actually think about continuing to draw in just a very, very, very small amount of air to keep that suspension and to keep those muscles engaged that you're using to draw air in. We're going to suspend for a few seconds and then I just want you to relax the muscles that you've been keeping engaged 
and notice how an exhalation happens or begins to happen with no effort on your part. So that'll look like this. So if that feels really choppy, uh, it's possible that you are closing up your throat without noticing it. So if you have something going on that sounds maybe like this. If you hear that sudden release of a lot of air, it probably means that you're still closing up somewhere in your throat. Now, if it feels like you moved a whole lot more air on that inhale than you did on that reflexive exhale, that's a totally normal response. And don't worry because we're gonna feel the exact opposite thing now that we're switching to a reflexive inhale. So the first way that we can achieve a reflexive effortless inhalation is using an exercise that was designed by Carl Stau, who was an extremely important and influential researcher in breathing mechanics and definitely worth more uh, research if this is a topic that you're interested in. What we're going to do is standing, you know, without placing your hands in any particular place, just standing in a nice upright position or seated in a nice upright position with a neutral free spine. I want you to count continuously in a whispered voice, one, two, three, four. So you're gonna repeat, you're gonna repeat these numbers until you can't whisper any longer. And then once you relax, a really deep full breath will just be drawn in automatically. So that'll look like this. So effortlessly, I can feel my whole belly and lower back being pushed out as air is drawn in and fills up my chest cavity completely. So the whispered counting exercise is a really great and easy way to begin to experience a passive inhalation. But for wind instrument playing, we need to use a lot more force to expel the air in order to actually produce the sound. And this is where a lot of the dysfunction can begin to occur because you need to all of a sudden go from tensed down here for forceful blowing out to suddenly everything is relaxed here to allow for a really nice easy inhale so for this second exercise, I want us to still aim for achieving a passive reflexive inhalation, but in our preparation now, we're going to engage a lot more uh, with our muscles as we expel the air out. So I'd like you to put your hands back here around, again, your bottom most ribs with your thumbs and around your belly with your fingers. And this time, I want us to feel for hard muscles with our fingers, and I want you to focus on drawing your belly button back and in towards your spine, and even up a little bit towards your chest as you exhale. So that's gonna be our exhale, and then we're going to have to shut all of those muscles off instantly all at the same time, once we're empty, in order to experience a reflexive inhale. So that'll look like this.
So if you heard me draw some air in, that's because I, I breathed in with my nose. You could do it either way. Let me do a version where I breathe in through my mouth. And this time you actually hopefully won't be able to hear it at all because it'll just be so effortless that uh, the inhalation won't even be audible. So exhaling again, drawing my belly button in. And immediately without me having to do anything, a really full deep breath just gets drawn into my lungs. Okay, so now that the patterns of a reflexive inhale and a reflexive exhale are beginning to feel more comfortable, let's apply them to our instrument. So for clarinet players, I would recommend just starting on an open G. If you're not a clarinet player, the equivalent to that would be just to play whatever note requires the least amount of resistance um, or the least amount of effort to play. So what I want you to do is begin, as we've done already now a couple of times, a reflexive inhale. So forcing all of the air out first, allowing a reflexive inhale to come in, getting ready to play, and then what you'll notice is that this first note happens with really no effort, almost no engagement from your muscles that you would use to blow out. And for this exercise, at least in the beginning, I would recommend not using any articulation, so we're just going to start the note with the air. So starting with a reflexive inhale, I'm going to force all of the air out that I can. And as you hold the note longer and longer, you'll have to work a little bit more, apply a little bit more force, a little bit more pressure from down here. But the very start of the note, it should almost feel exactly like that reflexive exhale from earlier, like you're doing nothing. And in fact, you know, since we're starting on an air attack, it's going to be completely normal to hear a little bit of air sound go through the horn before you actually get the note. And that's all a part of the exercise. So I hope this has been helpful and clear. Um, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Uh, this is a very complicated topic, but one that is um, really foundational to the way that I think about playing and teaching. And so it's something that I'm sure I'll do more videos on in the future or have other ways of explaining as I progress myself. As always, I look forward to reading your comments. If you've liked this video, um, please consider subscribing. And happy playing.